Hey, Orgel 502 friends, how are you? This is our welcome to the shores of Lake Michigan. We're actually um, in a place called Saugatuck Dune State Park, and this is a place that I've spent a lot of time in my lifetime, cross-country skiing, mountain biking, just, just enjoying the waves and the beach. Um, in many ways, this beautiful place is a place that I call home. So why a project at Saugatuck Dunes? Well, on June 15, I was flying from Spokane back to Grand Rapids. It was Father's Day. On the plane, I began to reflect on being dad. I love this job title, and I'm thankful for the four daughters in my life. Later in the week, on the 20th of June, Tress and I celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. More reflection, this time on being a husband, and I realized that I love this job title too. As I considered my project, I started thinking about a scene back in the fall of 1992. For Tressa and me, it was our third date, and I took her to Saugatuck Dune State Park. It was a beautiful, cool, late September day. The sun was in full display, and as we sat on our blanket, enjoying the scenery, something amazing came into play. Monarchs began to float above us. They were on their migration route and were following the Lake Michigan shoreline. It was an absolutely beautiful scene, so for my project, I chose to recreate this memory. The challenge will be to integrate the five sessions from our three-day intensive at Gonzaga, but that is my goal, to bring the elements of architecture, music, art, film, and dance into our discussion. So here's the scene. Take in the picture for a moment. You see the dunes and the shoreline. You also see the water and its graceful movement, and the late afternoon sky is hinting that dusk is coming soon. Tress and I are settled in the dune and we are taken in by the moment, by the majesty of the monarchs floating above us. It's important to note that I brought my four daughters into this process. Yes, the painting is about me and Tressa, but it's also about a family, a family that has called this place home. For the canvas, I picked a door. I found this door at a Habitat for Humanity Restore and I believe it serves as an important reminder from our session on architecture. The door creates a sense of space, doesn't it? I mean, the door can be open or closed. In the context of our relationships, do we open ourselves to others or do we shut them out? In the context of our business life and the teams with whom we work, doesn't the same idea hold true? Do we open ourselves to other ideas, expressions, and opinions, or do we close the door and shut down the process of divergent and convergent thinking? The door reminds me, too, of an arch and how an arch is supported by a keystone as leaders are calling us to provide support to our teams. Our power, or our position, in fact, is to be shared with those whom we serve. In this painting, I hope you feel a sense of rhythm. Look at the waves. They move back and forth, even dance with each other as they lap against the shore. And there's rhythm to the butterflies, too. They float and glide as if they were also a wave. To watch them is to hear music. Perhaps a song by Michael Hedges represents their rhythm and movement. Tuning into this rhythm is to listen to the song beneath the words. As a husband and a father, I need to understand more deeply the meaning behind my wife and daughter's words. To know they each have hopes and fears, needs and concerns, suggests that I need to listen more deeply to hear the song. As leaders, this holds true as well. When we listen well, says Robert Greenleaf, we lift those around us. I love that. Another leadership meme that comes to mind for this project is the idea of giving the work back. As I thought about this painting, I wanted to give my daughter some ownership in the work because, as I stated earlier, the Saugatuck Dunes has become a home for all of us. The creative process is a process of surrender. To surrender, it can be a challenging thing for us. To take this a bit deeper, it takes humility and a sense of vulnerability to see something new. For me, part of this humility can be expressed in the words of one of my favorite wilderness explorers, John Muir. As he describes his first ascent into the Sierra mountain range, Muir writes, Oh, these vast, calm, measureless mountain days, inciting at once to work and rest, Days in whose light everything seems equally divine, opening a thousand windows to show us God. To look through a window, I believe, is to see and see again. It is one thing to see the beauty of the landscape, but to see again is to see a creator behind the creation, 
a creator who delights in beauty and loves to surprise us with his handiwork. This idea of surrender also reminds me of how we enlist a team to complete a project. As leaders, we may have a specific idea in mind in terms of the final outcome. Yet if we seek to bring others into the creative process, we must respect their insights and imagination and allow their creative expression to run the course. As I think about this project, I asked my daughters to join me. Though I was a little nervous about this process, I think the end result is way better than I could have done on my own. A very important leadership lesson for me. Courage, for the existentialist, is to make decisions that move one towards the unknown future. As I think about relationships and leadership, it takes courage to step into the future and embrace change. Certainly commitment can be described as a key attribute of a healthy marriage, and a leader must see the importance of and stay committed to connecting with the people and the events in his or her life. For sure, it takes courage to commit to a relationship, two people from different backgrounds and different perspectives, essentially saying, I will put you first. This is commitment, a deep commitment that is rooted in what C.S. Lewis defines as gift love. This type of love expects no reciprocity, just the desire to pour oneself into others and to help them grow. This love, by the way, reflects the servant leader. Watching the monarchs float down the shoreline, to see and see again is to see their migration path spell out the phrase, gift, love. In some ways, a relationship is a dance, and it's helpful to look at leadership this way as well. If in part, I can be defined by the dance element of a float, in other words, sustained, light, and indirect movement, and my wife is best defined as a dab, quick, light, and direct, how do these different dance moves impact our relationship? And how do these kinds of differences impact our work relationships? If I float, do I need to be more of a punch? As I reflect on working through this project with my four daughters, the reality is we danced through it. Each girl brought a different style and expression to the project. Some were willing to dive in, some were more reserved, some used slashing and flicking brush strokes, while others approached the work with dabs and glides. As I watched them work, I gained a deeper appreciation for their uniqueness and in their ability to work together. As a father, a husband, and a leader, I strive to be an open door. For sure, this is my goal. To be an open door is to be adaptive and creative, helping the ones I love move through change. I've come to more deeply understand the rhythm in relationship as well, and my desire is to hear the song beneath the words, to listen well, and to lift others. To surrender is to give power and authority to others. Servant leaders do this out of instinct. My desire is to continue growing a servant heart. And it takes courage to lead well. When life is led well, says Mahdi, it is a strenuous, active enterprise. But isn't this our calling, to live life to the fullest? And finally, living in relationship with others suggests that a dance is taking place around us. In the end, I'm struck by Daniel Pink's reference to the need for play. Don't we need more laughter and humor in life? I believe this approach to life is good for the soul. Thanks for walking through this project with me, and thanks for an amazing on-campus and online experience. Blessings to all of you.